The conversation about AI is moving so fast. And in my little world, the world of art, the discussion splits into two. Primarily, there is the economic conversation, art services as commerce. Then there is a quieter second conversation, one which is more philosophical. Conversations about where this fits in the canon of art history, as many traditional art lovers still dismiss it totally. And I can see why, invested as they are in last century's concepts of art, they have yet to see what's coming. And those artists who work in the digital space are so flash-bombed by AI that they don't even know where to start. But I'm interested and slightly baffled by the lack of conversations about the philosophy of art in this new space, as it used to be very linked to the philosophy of what it meant to be human. It's easy to dismiss the importance of this conversation as psychobabble. However, Generation Z and those growing up in this world are the most digitally native, connected generation. But all studies show that they are also the most lonely, the most nihilistic with the least hope for the future by their own definition. This is the generation that are gonna to have to live with, work with and manage the proliferation of AI. I don't want them to just roll over and let AI manage them. When it does become dominant, and it will in many areas, and we may potentially bow down to its knowledge and wisdom if it doesn't understand us, because in our creation of it, we didn't understand ourselves, then then we are doomed. So at risk of sounding like a utopian, hopelessly romantic artist, I want to try to express why art is not just about self-expression. There is a quote that I use to death from the artist Edward Hopper who says, if you could say it in words, there would be no reason to paint. I'm gonna try and do just that. And I'm gonna probably make a total hash of it too. But hopefully as AI focuses us to have these kind of conversations more, I, it can at least be seen as a contribution. There is obviously much discussed about the output of AI in economic terms, copyright terms, the effect on commerce and trade, stealing. But I feel like this is very heavily squeezing the ideas of what art was in its already contorted form to an even more horrifically misunderstood place. We will have the most distorted AI models based as they are on our current ideas of the world as they will not be based on something that human culture always used to hold very dear. And as we all stand on the brink of this AI revolution, we need to re-establish that link. And it's something I plan on spending the next year or so exploring and fighting for. So what we call art today has become a deformed, mutated Frankenstein from its origins. Today, the word is almost useless. Discussions about what is art has become so tired, pulled by philosophers for at least a hundred years, polluted by commerce and then torn away from the public by an elite navel-gazing art world where artworks at the peak of the academy's admiration are nothing more than business investment opportunities for the rich, the, the bourgeoisie, which in turn patronise the proletariat, the public, as they do not see the value difference between their kids' scribbles and what adorns the galleries of contemporary art. Because really, there isn't any difference. But I am not blinkered by my passion for art. I don't blame this at the feet of any particular economic system and oddly for an artist I actually disagree with a lot of public funding for the arts. I believe so strongly that art can stand on its own two feet that if you apply external supports you have to justify which versions of it get support and you end up too influenced by what's good politics or self-serving optics of why you're doing it. The art they then make is pumped with value because of the story of the artists or the community it came from, not with the value of how people connect to the output. It waters down the concept of art so much so that asking any adult what is art appropriately gets more size than sincere thought. And it's in need of a severe resuscitation. I am hoping that as AI develops, it will close the loop on all this ambiguity. Once AI can make anything when we can't tell where the human ends and AI begins, I think these shitty modern definitions of art will finally be extinguished and put out of their misery. 
And I think art that connects us back to who we are as humans will be revitalized. To talk about art and AI art, we do have to bounce between quite romantic ideals of the power of art, its benefit to humanity, and cold realities of commercial utility and how it benefits the economy of the culture. But this is a balance that artists have always had to make. Those who create for the love of just pure creation and maybe have another job don't seem to really mind or worry about it. But artists who are professional in their craft always thought that AI would come for their jobs last. They would think it's so hard to be creative as a human and to monetize it that obviously AI is going to come for the easily trainable professions first. It would be a benefit to be creative in this new age. That's what everyone thought, but it risks being totally the other way around. Artists are freaking out and the corporations and businesses that hire them are gleefully looking to cut costs on their commissions. If you associate the ideals of a traditional artist, even artists who use their creativity for successful commercial purposes like architects or film producers, graphic or game designers, their curious creative temperament normally feels a bit icky about the values and morals of big business, but given the opportunity, they often align with them, if the price is right. And businesses put up with these airy fairy artists as they can make their products pretty and palatable and pleasant for the masses. You see, this duality between artists and the client has always existed. And I think it always will. But the foundation of this conflict must be recognized, especially now as we start to discuss AI art, because it's not being driven by the artists, but by technologists. It's the computer scientists and their wealthy backers who hold the keys to the tool. These increasingly smart coders and their managers are undeniably incredibly talented and great thinkers, many argue, including me, that they have more in common with those great masters, those painters of old who are also engineers. But does Silicon Valley represent the morality of the populace? In the days of old, the church, the royalty or the aristocracy held the power of its time and it looked to ingratiate the masses to their ideas through commissioning of great works of art. Just as the international brands and blockbuster production houses of today are doing the same. When the Pope started moaning to Michelangelo about how long it was taking to complete the Sistine Chapel, he responded, will be finished when I have satisfied myself in the matter of art. But it is my pleasure, the Pope retorted, that you should satisfy our desire to have it done quicker. And it was not until he was threatened with being thrown off the scaffolding did Michelangelo decide he could probably speed it up a little bit. And I'm sure many of Michelangelo's peers called him a sellout. But what keeps artists and the client at odds is the same thing that keeps them in accord. For the former, Art is a means of exploring new ideas and novel ways to connect and to understand ourselves, each other and the world around us. And the latter, it's a means of achieving economic or political or social ends. They both need each other. The client needs the creativity of artists to make their concepts attractive and the artists need to eat and afford a roof over their head. But this framing of AI art or before it digital art had already become uncoupled from art in its purest sense. I'm gonna tell a story to try and illustrate my point and I'm gonna go a bit off the beaten track with this one, so bear with me. It's a story about ignorantly trying to grow your own food. If you've ever done this, perhaps just one small pot on the window ledge of your city flat as that's all the space you have, you might try and grow a few tomatoes. After months of watering, you get two. Two lovely, ripe-looking tomatoes. And happily, you pull them off and you pop them in a salad. And then you savour them for all you can. And you think, oh, Jesus, that wasn't really worth it. I mean, they were fine. They weren't great. And then never do it again. Think that was actually a total waste of time and just get them from the supermarket in future. 
all ideas of being self-sustaining dashed. But something else did happen in that process. It wasn't about the two small, uninspired tomatoes in your shitty salad. Each day in the months leading up to that disappointment, you got a joy from watching it grow. You marveled just at how it did it. You saw and understood better how your food manifested in the world. Then if you took a seed from one of your grown tomatoes and you replanted it back on the windowsill, you witness a full cycle, a cycle we intellectually all know exists but we are emotionally completely detached from. The next day, what your body doesn't need from those tomatoes leaves you. And you don't even have to think about that. You just visit a piece of porcelain and press a button. Now, I'm not suggesting that you use that to fertilize your tomatoes, but it does tell you how far away from this cycle we really are. And it makes you think about the other inputs to that cycle. You bought this soil to do round one. Has it got enough nutrients in it to grow round two? And then later you may walk past a view of trees, one that you love, and look at the topsoil for the first time and see that it's just mushed up leaves from the previous autumn's falling foliage. Notice how over the years it's pressed down and down to ultimately feed the very trees that it came from. It makes you see the cycle of growth and decay. Then on the metro on your way to work, you may notice a little bit of green growing through the cracks in the pavement and start to realize just how plastered on this human created world is. Say the next day you give up your green fingered ideas of being self-sustaining and decide instead to buy a sketchbook. You're gonna try out being an artist instead. Grand ideas about drawing that line of trees you walk past or go back to the metro station and draw that environment. And the final output, the drawing you produce just like the tomatoes is a total disappointment. Underwhelming. I'll just take a photo next time. Much more efficient. But in the process of drawing the scene, you became infinitely more connected to it. You notice the way branches stretch in the wind, feel a big gust of wind coming and start to predict how the view will react to it. Or the internal worlds of the faces of the people rushing for trains. You notice how you capture movement differently to a camera. You see value in representing how you feel more than what the camera sees. You see things you've not noticed before. You wonder why you struggle to depict what you witness. Your clumsy marks don't look like the people as they're not staying still enough for you to even try and draw them. So you do some flowing, strange lines that look nothing like people. And you see how you are exploring and understanding more than just how something appears. You never noticed that before because you never really looked. Drawing, you are forced to really look. The view becomes more real, the medium more real, the tactile process more real, the trees, the people moving around you more real, and you understand reality better. That's why I make art. I don't make art just to have a good piece of art at the end. And I get nothing in copying a photograph to look like a photograph. And that's fine if that's what people do. But for me, I don't understand anything more. I may understand more about photography if I draw photographs, but that doesn't really teach me anything more about reality. So someone taking a photo of that scene and telling an AI model to replicate it as a pencil drawing and showing me and going, look, it's made a better drawing than you. It's a better piece of art. I go, sure, I agree. But it totally misses the point of why I drew mine. Now, if someone wanted a hyper-realistic picture of that scene, the most efficient way to give it to them would be to use these tools, obviously. And that's where the commercial value comes. But that way of thinking has just totally dominated any discourse around art. And no one now remembers why they were drawn to making art in the first place. It's not the same thing. It is a confusing subject. It's difficult to explain and I trip over myself with it all the time. But I do have a, a sense that the feeling I have is actually quite simple. Historically, many people who were drawn to painting were not pulled by the same thing. Many of the people painting portraits before the camera came along were simply technicians solving an engineering problem of creating the illusion of a person's likeness when they are no longer there. Or a doctor who by necessity has to do anatomical drawings. 
Looking back, we call that art and we call them artists. But if they were alive today, they would likely be solving modernity's problems with the latest technology and not be drawn to making what we now call art at all. There is artistry in engineering, law, finance, and many other professions, but visual art is something quite unique to me in this way, especially compared to other forms of artistry. There is a quote that I love, which is that painters like painting and writers like having written. And I think that's true. Painting is more about the process. I love writing also, and I get more from having something finished than the stress of writing it. Equally, I have a lot of fun on Midjourney, which is an AI diffusion art generating tool, but it's a lot more like writing. And I really enjoy making images with these tools, but it doesn't scratch my painter's itch. I think AI makes fantastic things, but I also feel unless people reconnect and re-understand why they are drawn to making art, then it's just gonna become a strange, deformed commercial art resource tool, but not have a chance to do something great. And it really could. And I do see places where it really is doing interesting things. My point is that we have to remind ourselves that we are human first. That art is about connecting in a real way to real people in the real world. And as AI is modeling us and our behaviors of how we see the world, that has to be important to remember. To do that, we need to rethink about the fundamentals. And that's what I've been trying to do. And if you want to see my attempts as an artist, I spent the last year in the woods behind my house trying to draw trees with burnt pieces of tree. You can't get more back to basics than that. So if you want a mindful 20 minutes, I made a film about it without me rambling on. So you can check that out. And all the work from it's on my website. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I hope it made you think. And I'd love to know what you do think. Anyway, I've got to go check on my tomatoes.